I wish I would have like a drawing board here, but I guess I can maybe use the chart here. Um, but I'm going to use coin market cap as well to kind of show you guys a very simple way of um, kind of doing this, <laughs> right? Being formless, being shapeless, kind of flowing with the market um, and just being prepared for multiple scenarios, right? So what do I mean by that? Essentially, you need to understand how does money flow in the crypto market, right? Super, super important. Um, and a lot of people who, you know, have a particular affinity for a coin might not like to hear this, but this is exactly how the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency market works. And that is actually probably one of the best ways to describe this market is, you know, <laughs> going back, I think maybe uh, this, this meme here, yeah, Bitcoin, ETH and USD, and then everything else, right? Not that everything else isn't going to appreciate more than Bitcoin and ETH. It definitely can over certain periods of time, but then over other periods of time, it won't. So when that time is that it won't price appreciate, what can you do, right? Well, what you can do is you can focus on the mains, right? Focus on that Citadel cornerstone, uh, and then build those up again, right? It's kind of a defensive strategy here. So how does the money flow in this market, right? So if you take a look at market cap, I mean, this is really where a lot of people go first in this market, right? They take a look here at coin market cap or another market cap type site for crypto. And they say, okay, what's my risk tolerance and uh, what should I be getting into? Now, if you are a retail trader, how you're going to look at this is, well, Bitcoin's too expensive. I can't buy one of those. Oh, well, you don't need to buy a whole one. Well, yeah, but, you know, I just want something that I feel good about because it's cheaper, right? This is the thought, the thinking of retail, which is not the correct mindset. It's absolutely incorrect. But anyways, uh, this is the idea of uh, unit bias that me and Miguel, Dollar Cost Crypto, talk about in the Crypto Mindset course, right? Because you can buy just a fraction of Bitcoin, but people do want to feel like they're holding more of an asset. So you get the retail traders coming in. Where do they go first, right? They go and look here, maybe at the top bits and say, okay, what coins look cheap? And okay, we got Cardano here. So it's not surprising why the marketing for Cardano works really well with retail traders is because hmm, it looks cheap. I can buy a lot of those. And it's actually, you know, one of the higher cryptocurrencies. So it must be good, right? Same with Ripple, right? Um, yeah, so... You know, that's how newer people to the market will take a look at it. Now, that is the incorrect way uh, to look at it at the at the start. So let's there's two factors in here um, with how whales look at the market. Right. So right now, if we're looking at it from a basic brand new to crypto retail traders perspective, they're also going to think the same thing about Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, those. Right. This is why they tend to go towards those a lot, because it's that get rich quick mentality and uh, I can have a lot of coins and, and, and that type of thing, right? But if you take a look at it from a whale's perspective or somebody who has, you know, a lot more to play with here, um, basically they're going to take a look at a few different factors. One, the more money you have, the more stability you likely are likely to want, right? And the altcoins you're going to take risks on, right? You don't need to take a risk with the majority of your portfolio right? Which is the correct way to think about it, right? You can keep, and I'll, let's say you have a million dollars, right? And you take 10% uh, of that, right? Which is a hundred thousand dollars, or you take 5% of it, or you take 1% of it, right? 1% would be $10,000. Um, so you got 10 to a hundred thousand dollars, let's say, if you're just going to do one to 10% of the portfolio, which, you know, still is relatively high risk from that perspective. Um, if you take that amount of money and you throw it at an altcoin, but the other 90% of your portfolio is in, let's say, Bitcoin, ETH, and, and, and dollars. You're going to be fine over the long term. And if that altcoin doesn't work out, whatever. If you do that with, you know, up to 25 or 30% of your portfolio, it's not going to matter. So where do they go first? And then the, that's one of the things that they think about. So they're going to be like, okay, I want Bitcoin and ETH because well, why does Michael Saylor want Bitcoin? Because... <laughs> for micro strategy, they have so much money, right? He doesn't need to get a lot of price appreciation. He needs basically this asset to outpace inflation. And um, the other thing that they're looking at is market conditions, right? So what are the current market conditions in this space? Um, and so I'll start from the conditions of 
a low going towards a high and then back again to kind of give you guys the ebb and flow uh, of how this moves, right? So um, let's think here for a second. Uh, basically, so let's say I'm a, I'm a whale. Uh, I'm wanting to put in, you know, mainly to these three coins, but I'm, I'm looking at a few other coins. When should I start, you know, taking a little bit of risk with some of this stuff and going into the altcoins just, you know, to have a little bit of fun or to also, you know, get more gains on a smaller bit of my portfolio and see how it goes, right? Um, in a, let's pull out here and take a look at Bitcoin on the weekly. We'll look at market conditions. And then we'll take a look at what some of the whales are doing right now and how what that might mean, right? So since the whales and the majority of money is going to come into the main top market cap coins first, right? Let's say these four. Um, this is where money flows into the crypto market. And when does it usually start flowing in? Well, you've got different types of whales these days, right? We'll take off the drawings here. The different types of whales that we have these days, right? We have your traditional crypto whales, right? People who are um, running different types of businesses like exchanges such as CZ or guys who are running uh, projects like Vitalik um, and, and, you know, plenty of others. Uh, we have, you know, Sam Bankman fried who's running uh, multiple projects. And so, right, these guys, they're going to look for when do I get a severely cheap opportunity where I can't go wrong? And what am I going to get into first? Whether I'm a, if I'm a crypto whale, right? I'm going to go into Bitcoin with some of my portfolio because I understand that, you know, this is going to be here for the long term. And every time it comes down here towards this 200 week moving average, it's extremely cheap. So I'm going to jump into this first. Let's say we're at a low when we hit that 200 day moving average here. Let's, let's just look over the last few years. Comes down, hits the 200 day moving average. I know that around this period, um, Bitcoin has tended uh, sorry, 200 week moving average. Um, Bitcoin has tended to show support around this region. We only had it at this point one other time, but that was the lows of the last bear market. So I'm going to take a good stab here also in terms of percentage, right? Bitcoin was down here about 84%. Um, so I can start dollar cost averaging in there, or I can go heavy there, whichever I want to do. And if I go down here to other bear markets, right? This one down here. Uh, went down about 86%. So yeah, very similar. Came down 86%. If you kind of extend the 200 here, uh, let's just take a tool. Uh, Where's our paintbrush? There we go. We just kind of draw a little line across here. Not too good of, at the art, but you get what I'm saying here, right? You just kind of pull across. Okay. So that area is high value, right? Turn this off. So that was good. It was an 86% drop, 84% drop, touch that area. Okay. I'm going to accumulate after that area. It comes down, touches it again, right? Continuing to DCA in this period. And anything here under $4,000 was good to DCA in and just cheap as hell, right? So I get into Bitcoin first, right? But we know that there is, the whales do need retail, right? So the whales are going to create floors. And so they you can create a floor here. They can create a floor here. They can create a floor here, but they do need retail right? They need the uh, many, many little buying orders to push up the price, right? A lot of the price movement um, to the upside is not actually whales just buying a ton at once on the open market because a lot of them are buying on OTC over the counter, right? Which does not affect the price directly. Um, a lot of them are buying um, right over the counter. So um, they're not necessarily going to be the ones to push up the price all the time, uh, especially now that we have uh, such a high market cap at, here for Bitcoin, right? So uh, they do need retail to come and get them excited so that that gets, you know, price appreciation right over time. And this is true in a lot of different markets, not just Bitcoin, uh, traditional markets as well. And so they get into Bitcoin, but until Bitcoin breaks its previous all time high, I'm just going to show this last, you know, move here as an example. Um, until Bitcoin hits that all time high, uh, I'm, let me go over to a better chart here so it's a little bit more clear. Go. 
go. We'll take off the LA waves there for now. I just wanted to basically take this across here. So money flows into Bitcoin here. Great. Maybe some people are buying ETH too, but why would you be buying Bitcoin here and not Ethereum if you're a whale? Uh, essentially, you're buying it here because we know Ethereum lags Bitcoin a bit in the early stages because this is where retail uh, and it, actually a lot of miners have gone bankrupt around this period, right? Um, so a lot of whales have lost money in this period too, but the ones who are sticking around, the ones who are in cash or the ones that have extra streams of income or whatever to buy these lows, right? Um, they're buying here and they're waiting for the excitement of retail. Now, this price appreciation is great, but not until Bitcoin gets past its previous all-time high is really when um, the market is going to get going. So they're accumulating here. Every major dip, they probably accumulate some here. Another dip, accumulate some here. So they're accumulating in a pretty damn wide range. Uh, let's put it on a box. Maybe a rectangle here. So they're accumulating in, accumulating in a wide range. Maybe they're accumulating here around that 6,000 as well. Um, we have to take a look at a few metrics to see that. But let's say they were accumulating right during the majority of this period here. And they're going to stop around like, 14, 15,000, um, because that's when Bitcoin gets close to its previous all time high. And, and they don't want to buy above its all time high because why? Right? Why do they not want to buy above its previous all time high? Because they know um, here, you know, when Bitcoin's above its 20 week moving averages, alts can move too, but there's going to be a lot less confidence in them because during this period here, a lot of alts died. Right? And so there's still a lot, not a lot of confidence here in altcoins until Bitcoin breaks its previous all-time high. Then retail starts to get excited, right? So that's where the whales can start selling off, right, their Bitcoin. And they can sell off that Bitcoin either for cash, right? And just be like, okay, I like that I got, let's say they averaged a price of about 6,000. And then they increased here, you know, to about 30,000. They got a 376% increase. That's good enough for some whales, right? Um, and so, yeah, they're great with that. That's why we saw on the on-chain data, they were starting to basically start selling off during this period here. What can we use to look at that? Um, there's a few ways to look at it. Uh, I don't have the metric on me right now. I don't think, uh, in terms of what I wanted to show for that. Um, we can look here at the HODL waves, uh, a little bit. Um, uh, but I think I wanted to mention that a little bit later, not for right now. So anyways, they could be selling into USD here right? Uh, during this period of time, they probably dollar cost average out as well, right? You dollar cost average out over, let's say this period here, right? So I buy in here, sell up here. That's a simple way to look at it. Um, another way to look at it is right around that previous all time high. Once it breaks out there, they take their Bitcoin profits, uh, or at least some of them, a small percentage, and they start layering that down into altcoins. Now, this is going to be various types of whales, right? Not just the, the biggest of whales, but also other ones. They start to see, you start to see Bitcoin money start flowing into other assets, right? Ethereum, the uh, the higher cap coins, right? Those ones start moving first, the layer ones. Then you get the, the sub ecosystem coins, um, you know, and your higher yield coins. And, you know, you start basically getting into the higher risk stuff here in the cryptocurrency market. This is how they're looking at it. So if whales are looking at it this way, retail should be looking at it in this way, or at least understanding their actions. Not that retail is going to take the same action necessarily, right? Because they might be trying harder um, to outpace inflation. So they're going to either go broke or they're going to get rich. Like that's their mentality, right? Um, a lot of them, not, not the right mentality, but it is the mentality that a lot of them have. And so during this period of time, um, they're going to start, you know, buying coins. And then when they, when retail starts seeing, let's say Solana go up, um, Binance uh, go up, uh, Dot go up, uh, all these, you know, even Shiba Inu, when retail starts seeing those coins move, um, they start getting excited. And so they start buying those as well. So it's kind of, they're copycatting some of the whales and now, but they're doing that with the majority of their portfolio. Whereas the whales are doing it with like maybe 5% of their portfolio or 25% of their portfolio, you know, whatever they're willing to risk. Right. And the only reason the whales are doing that is because they're looking to gain more of the mains, they're looking to gain more Bitcoin and Ethereum, and maybe, right, another altcoin or two, essentially, to, um, you know, 
have that higher risk play. Something like Hex, for example, there's plenty of whales that have jumped into Hex. We saw that with the sacrifice phase. Um, we saw some whales put in, you know, I think it was about $30 million um, to buy. I think it was the biggest whale who bought um, Pulse, um, you know, during that first sacrifice phase. I can't remember if it was Pulse or Pulse X, but you get the drift. Um, and so you, you have people who've made a lot of money, right? Maybe they bought ETH down at 30 bucks. Maybe they bought Bitcoin down at, 500 or whatever right so they already have more money that they can risk and so they've outpaced the dollar quite a lot significantly even with the major downtrends in bitcoin and eth in uh in some bear markets they've still outpaced inflation by so much that their cash has increased and now they can go out there and make those bets but if those bets work out great they're going to continue to you know work in that uh altcoin system but if they don't work out yeah whatever you know it's just some profit that they lost and they move on and they stick to the mains right um that's why you got guys like michael saylor doing that i think a lot of retail traders don't think about you know how people with larger amounts of money think because it is a very different thought process right it's more conservative because they don't need to try as hard to gain that money over the long term um so that's just uh the middle point, right? And so this is kind of like that roller coaster metaphor that I've told you guys a lot before. I haven't mentioned it in a while where you have the upper end of the roller coaster, right? Bitcoin's the leading uh, horse, uh, the, the front cart in the roller coaster going up, 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 just like here in the price, right? Up, 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 right? And then when Bitcoin starts going down, right? The altcoins lag Bitcoin. So we had a high here on Bitcoin um on uh april 14th i believe it was or april 12th somewhere around there of 2021 right and then how long did it take before the altcoins started going down well you can see eth as kind of the front leader for the altcoins right because like i said here right bitcoin moves above here first but then people start going into other coins eth being the first one because you have higher returns and then it bleeds down into the lower coins, but by the time you get to the small caps, right, you don't need a lot of money going into coin number 100 uh, to push it up as much as, let's say, the higher cap coin of like number eight, right? It's going to take more money to push the higher cap coin caps up than it will for the lower cap coins. And so then you get the high here on ETH around uh, here, sorry, uh, around May 10th. So about three weeks later, almost a month later than Bitcoin. So that's when Bitcoin's already gone over uh, down the front part of the roller coaster, right? Going down that first major hill. And then uh, Ethereum and the altcoins, right? are kind of still behind it, uh, still making gains. But as soon as Ethereum and, and the altcoins start going down here, right? In this move, that's when the roller coaster just the back cart flips over the front cart. And basically there's a crash, right? 